Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines, and today we're taking a closer look at the camera on the LG V20. To preface this video, our hands-on was held exclusively inside a fairly dark room, so what we're taking a look at today will mostly be lower light scenarios and a software overview of what LG has created to power the experience on the LG V20's four cameras. Yes, the LG V20 has four cameras on board, a number that seems a little crazy until you realize what they all do. On the back sits a 16 megapixel sensor with a 78 degree f-stop 1.8 lens, which is right next to an 8 megapixel sensor with a 135 degree f-stop 2.4 lens. On the front is a pair of 5 megapixel shooters, one with an 83 degree angle lens, and one with a 120 degree wide angle lens, both sporting f-stop 1.9 aperture. The camera configuration is a mashup between 2015's LG V10 and 2016's LG G5, with sensors that meet or exceed the quality of those phones. In this harshly lit, lower light environment, you'll find lots of bright, narrow LED sources that only illuminate small sections of the room, and in the case of the bookshelf, this could lead to some seriously overblown shots. What we see from the V20's 16 megapixel shooter on the back is an incredibly well-balanced set of shots with great color accuracy too, little to no noise, and no harsh denoise algorithm either, despite being underground and in a dark room. It's easy to see how good zoom detail is when we look closer at the bookshelf here, and it's no trouble at all reading the titles of the books or seeing other minute details. Even that wide-angle lens camera does a great job, although because the lens isn't quite as well built for lower light situations, we could see the sensor struggling a little more to pull in light, making some images look a bit washed out or grainy. Still though, there's lots of potential here as this particular lens can be used in some seriously creative ways in most lighting conditions, as we saw with the G5 earlier this year. The front-facing cameras are definitely a bit low resolution for this kind of light and really start to show that as I move into darker areas. Neither the regular or wide-angle lens does a great job of low-light photography, but it's not terrible either. We'll see if this improves once we get our review unit, but it would definitely help to have a resolution boost a bit here from the 5 megapixel sensors included. Video quality definitely has promise, especially with that brand new Steady Record 2.0 mode, which uses both optic and digital stabilization to keep the frames truly still while walking or during any other kind of movement for that matter. It seems though that the rear camera in this unit's case struggled a little bit in lower light with movement, exhibiting quite a bit of shifting, but the wide angle lens did much better job of keeping things stabilized as I moved around the room. Again, we're gonna have to see if this carries over to the review unit or if this is just a software bug for the preview hands-on unit. The front-facing camera seems to fare a bit better in video mode than in picture mode with this type of lighting, but it's still a bit grainy for my liking, although that wide-angle lens in this case feels a tad bit better for some reason. LG has added in some new tricks in its camera software, starting with the brand new film type mode. These are effectively live filters for recording video, but they act a little different from photo filters because they're trying to actually replicate the look of certain types of professional film. LG is clearly pushing the phone towards creative professionals and bloggers alike, just like the V10, and it's providing more tools now than ever to get the job done. The interface is largely the same as we saw in the V10, with a few little tweaks here and there, and is an incredibly snappy experience overall. Launching the camera is done under two seconds from screen off, and even toggling between the dual cameras on the front or the back is done in fractions of a second, and can even be done while recording live. Even focusing is super fast thanks to the new three-stage hybrid autofocus, which utilizes laser autofocus first, phase detection autofocus next, followed by a contrast autofocus for micro-focusing. These three things are all done in under a third of a second total and represent some of the fastest focusing on the market, although not the absolute single fastest we've seen. We were pretty impressed with the camera on the V20, which should be no surprise given the camera on last year's V10, and definitely can't wait to get our hands on the final unit for more testing. We'll be able to bring you that video soon enough, but we hope you enjoyed this little hands-on and will subscribe to us for more content. Check us out on your favorite social media network and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 Android-based news coverage. Be sure to head on over to the channel and the site for plenty of LG V20 coverage. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.